Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. We're a very special guest uh, who's been on the show. It's been a while. Uh, Josh Cameron from Our Voice. He's the spokesperson or spokes raptor, as we're going to find out for Our Voice. Uh, Josh, thanks for coming on the show. Well, hey, thanks, man. I, I, I really appreciate it. I, uh, uh, if you go and dig through your emails, you'll see I've reached out to you a few times because I, I, I like your work, man. I, I love following you. Uh, a lot of people you're connected to. I got connected to you through uh, a, a good friend of yours, Jimmy, mm -hmm. of course. Um, and uh, yeah, I like what you do. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to, to come back on. Hey, man, I appreciate it. And I'm sorry it's taken so long to get you back on the show. But basically, um, you protested at an event and you were arrested. And I want that's the main reason you're here is to tell this story and let people know what's going on exactly. So why don't you tell us exactly what happened, sure. the status of it now? So, and, and this is where things get really weird and I, I'd love your help um, kind of unpacking what it all means. Uh, so I've been, uh, uh, full disclosure, I've been a very active uh, political activist uh, out on the streets, been to I don't know, a hundred different protests, rallies. Uh, I became a delegate, so I go to conventions. I've voted in special elections. So trying to understand some of the inner workings of how the party structure works. And uh, that way I garner a little bit of more influence. But I, I always show up with an American flag and I'm a leftist and that's a shitty clock at a shitty time. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, um, with that, I always show up with an American flag. I'm a combat vet, and I think it's foolish for the left to often disregard the power the flag holds. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it, it's such a powerful symbol that's philosophically meaningless. The whatever meaning is that you feel from it is what you've imparted into it. And um, but it it's it's dumb to not uh, tap into that. And so I showed up to a Mia Love rally at uh, it's called Thanksgiving Point in Lehigh, uh, Utah, and uh, unbeknownst to me, they own a wide swath of the land that comes in. It's a good, you know, maybe a kilometer or so, maybe not quite that, uh, up to their parking lot. Uh, they have a vineyard, et cetera. Anyway, I show up with an American flag. And within, so I walked up, went back to my car, and walked back up with an American flag within one minute of that happening. Like, literally just got there. An hour before the, the doors opened, they actually sent a, um, a, a Lehigh City police officer to tell me that the uh, security there want me off their property if I'm going to have an American flag. It's like, this is a right wing rally, bud. Like, I don't know if I told you, it says Mia runs with Mitt. Like, I don't like, what do you mean? I can't have an American flag. And I'm a, I, I mentioned, Hey, I'm a combat vet. The flag means something to me. And, uh, and he, he was nice. He was, uh, but he, in no, no uncertain terms told me that I needed to put my flag away if I was going to stay on the property. And so I have audio of the encounter. So I was actually, uh, I, I showed up just to ask people what their motivations were uh, for, for showing up to a rally like this. I even have audio of the very first person I was talking to, some dude named George, who allowed me to record him. Um, and I just was asking his motivations. He said he wanted to be there for immigration. He felt that we needed to tighten border security. Um, while I disagree, I wasn't there to disagree with him. I just kind of wanted to get some of his, his, his input. And literally a minute and a half in talking to him, there's a cop five feet from me that tells me, in my words, bro, you got to get the fuck off our property with, a, with an American flag. How crazy is that? And so um, I cross the street, right? So there's a street that I cross the street and there's a sign that says where you go to a movie theater. I didn't realize you had to go way up to the movie theater to, re to leave their property. There's like this rent fair going on, too. So I'm checking my phone. Holding an American flag, checking my phone, as benign as that. And then three security guards come up to me to reiterate, bro, get the fuck off our property. And again, my words, not theirs. They, they, were, they were linguistically nice, but again, in no uncertain terms, you can't be here with an American flag. So, specify again, whose property is this? So it's called uh, Thanksgiving Point. And uh, yeah, so it's called the show, and the show barn is on Thanksgiving Point. And the show barn is where this uh, this property is happening, or this uh, rally is happening. And uh, they ended up, uh, I think they were mad, and they wanted to punch down on somebody because they uh, actually delayed the start like three times uh, because not enough people showed up. There was bad traffic. Uh, 
there were people like me who it was a free event. So part of my protest was I ordered 10 tickets and threw nine in the garbage. I showed up as one person. That way uh, it looked like 10 people showed up. And uh, I felt slightly embarrassed when I showed up and they looked at my name. And there's like this whole laundry list of Joshua Camerons. Um, but, you know, it was what it was. It was a nice protest. I had fun. Uh, and it, here's here's what's the, the craziest thing is I showed up just a dude who wanted to find out a little bit more about a uh, right wing constituency. I don't know much about. I'm a veteran. I've worked in the oil fields in Utah, Vernal, Utah. I've driven over the road as a truck driver. I work in medical research now. So I'm, I, I, I feel like a, um, uh, a bit of a Richard Ojeda in, uh, in a little bit of the sense of I've got some working class values and um, I, I'm not afraid to, to speak out. But at the same time, I didn't want to speak out, but they triggered the, pr the protester in me. So they told me I had to get off the property I put my flag away. Um, I was allowed to stay on because I had a ticket to get in. And they let me in. They signed my name. I get in. I talk to Mia Love. I had the presence of mind to record with my phone, so it's <laughs> shitty audio. Um, but I recorded my phone, a conversation of me trying to get her to commit to a town hall. Because up until that point, it been about a thousand days since she had a town hall. Th because what she does is she gets uh, sanitized uh, business hour meetings. So regular people can't show up and they reach out and they'll reach out a lot of times same day or day before. Mm -hmm. So again, it's kind of sanitized. People don't really know. And they, they can turn to a dog and pony show and put it on the, uh, on the news saying, Hey, look what we did. We were just there. And everyone's like, what the Tell fuck? everybody who Mia Love is. So Mia Love, uh, as you, if you don't know, she's the congressional district, the first and only, if I, if I'm not mistaken, a black woman for Republicans. Um, She's a, a congressional district four here in Utah. Uh, Eighty-five percent of uh, what makes up congressional district four is Salt Lake City, though, and um, or Salt Lake County, rather. I'm sorry. And here's what's crazy: Salt Lake County had an eighty-one point eighty-nine percent turnout, dude. And guess who won the election? The Democrat. And what's interesting is that when she won in 2012. Um, she won uh, in, uh, in like 768 votes, give or take. Mm -hmm. And now Ben McAdams swung it to a 739 last night, and the votes resettled down to a, about a 695. 695 is 0.26%. 0.25% is when it triggers a recount. So he's literally 0.01% above what causes a, a recount. So it's, it's done, son. That's how it is. She's, yeah, she's out. She's and so, she, yeah, so she's former, former uh, congressional uh, uh, Congress uh, woman. And so now uh, Ben McAdams and Ben McAdams is somebody who I've, I've actually heckled personally. Uh, and so he's not somebody that I would consider a progressive green by any means. He's definitely left of me a love. And what I like about him is he'll meet with his constituents. He'll have town halls. Uh, he'll even let you kind of yell in his face a bit like there's. There's something honorable about that. Uh, he doesn't necessarily listen to all those ideas, which is unfortunate, but he's at least a, a, a nice step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But uh, So he won. And so Mia Love, after I had this conversation with her about, uh, hey, can you commit to a town hall? She's like, hey, guys, uh, w w what about the what about that one in the, in the past? Do you remember, the, remember that? Did you have one in the earlier times? Did you go to one of the earlier times? Well, what, what about a teletown hall? And just like is fumbling for an answer. And what's funny is, ironically, the uh, song "I the Tiger." As she's struggling for an answer, "I the Tiger" starts playing in the background in my recording, so it's great. Um, and uh, uh, so I was, I played nice. I was there for about an hour, and then when it started, our lieutenant governor, his name is Spencer Cox, he comes out. He's like, "Hey guys, we're here to support me and love, and she's here to save babies." And that that fucking triggered me, man. And so, like, I get the whole right-wing propaganda, say babies, a uterus is a baby, a zygote, a clump of cells is a baby. Um, but uh, I, I've been in war zones, man, with, in, in combat support hospitals, taking care of children, civilian children caught up in war. Like, I've basically taken care of babies. This motherfucker's like, she's here to save babies. And, like, they already like, bro, take your flag away, motherfucker. And it's like, I, what about Colin Kaepernick? Colin Kaepernick is, is a guy who, who disrespects veterans. When you're seeing a combat veteran within one minute, combat veteran who I can hear you in my recording saying, hey, I don't think he's going to be a problem. The guy I was recording say, hey, I don't have a problem with him on wow. audio. And they still said, bro, you got to get the fuck off our property. If you want a, an American flag, who does that? Who does that? And the right wing. 
And so they filed a discovery um, and they said that uh, I was talking to this guy, giving him like a, a piece of my mind or like grilling him some language about like me grilling this guy, uh, which means that they weren't even listening, which is great. Uh, and then uh, they uh, um, said that Mitt Romney told them to be aware of protesters. So does that suggest that Mitt Romney is afraid of, of American flags? And so what the fuck? And so our, our attorney general, Sean Reyes, was there. Again, I mentioned Lieutenant Governor Spencer Cox was there. And she's here to say babies. And so I got triggered. So I yelled out, so let's do it with contraceptives. And, and, uh, and I think I triggered some folks, right? And, uh, and <laughs> isn't that great? And, um, and so uh, then once he was done talking, he played some video. And I, I was just done. I was pissed. And I yelled out, you know, abolish ice, reunite family, save babies from cages. And there's a, a volunteer there who was just yelling, Wah! right behind my ear to try to drown me out so nobody could hear what I was saying. So she did So she was being as disruptive, if not more disruptive. Right. So standing next to me was a guy who was part of uh, what's called the CD4 coalition. I think a group of uh, about a thousand people who were pretty politically active on Facebook. Mm-hmm. who a lot of them campaigned and canvassed for Ben McAdams. Um, so he was standing next to me and he asked her, he asked her to stop screaming in his ear and the guys throwing me out. were like, Hey dude, you got to go. He's like, Whoa, I didn't say anything. I just asked her to shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, you got to go. You're standing next to this rap scallion, right? This, uh, yeah. It's, isn't that nuts? So I, again, I had the presence of mind to hit record on my phone. I don't know why I was so Johnny on the spot with the record. But you can hear me saying, I didn't even get a warning. And, and uh, well, it doesn't matter. You got to go. It's like, this is, this is my representative. Well, it doesn't matter. You got to go. I, I prefer not to. I, I don't really get a chance to talk to her. And I said, this is a First Amendment. Uh, and then you can hear me like getting all uh, a little uh, worried speech because they're literally ushering me out. And within one minute of me uh, being told I had to leave, probably less than a minute, I was outside the doors. Like I was basically gone. And then... As I was outside the doors, the cop who originally told me to get off the property said, dude, I, I warned you, basically saying they could ask you to leave. And so here I am now leaving. And then following up, the three guys who reiterated that I had to get off their property when I was just checking my phone with my American flag said, I want to uh, cite him for criminal trespassing. And the cop's like, you want to cite him for criminal trespassing? I'm like, yeah, I want to cite him for criminal trespassing. So they're invoking Schrodinger's laws. I'm, I'm legally on the premises, but now now I, I create a, a safe space where snowflakes melt, and then all of a sudden I'm, I'm criminally trespassing? Like, wow, who's the snowflake here? Let's get Tommy Lauren on the line and figure out what's going on, right? Like, this is nuts. It's crazy. Like, it, this is like a Twilight Zone episode, right? right. Here's a combat right. vet, and they're just like, go fuck yourself in every, in every way. And so since I uh, am a white guy, I'm a vet, I'm likely not going to get my head cracked in. So I think there's an interesting First Amendment issue. I reached out to the ACLU. They effectively said, hey, we'd love to help you out. However, since this is private property, even though it was open to the public with a ticket, it was still private property and we don't get involved in private property cases. And so I hired a lawyer. He's a former Salt Lake County DA. His name is uh, Greg Fairbrush. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, it, so he knows a, a bit of the ins and outs of the system. Uh, I uh, showed up to uh, Lehigh Justice Court and effectively, they said, hey, we want you to uh, to plea in abeyance to disorderly conduct. I said, no. Uh, my lawyer's like, basically, it's pretty minor charge and make things go away. Are you sure you don't want to do that? I said, yeah, I'm sure. And uh, I requested a jury trial. And so the reason why I wanted a jury trial is because I think I have a, the ability, if they decide to go to jury trial, to to really pine to a group of people who in Utah County are pro-veteran, me, they are against big government squashing rights. And so I think I have the ability to shape a First Amendment case in, in a way in which I think right, right-wingers will rightly say, hey, this is, this is, this is good. And in a, in a case where, you know, we, we're in a political environment where even when Obama was president, it's like, hey, there's some brown people standing up because they want clean water. Let's make it, Ill- let's make it legal to run them over. Right. Like, who even brings that idea up? Let alone a, a state legislator, man. Like, and so this is also what brought me to Our Voice. And this is why I uh, wanted to have Our Voice on the media uh, release. It's because I want people to see this is a First Amendment uh, issue. 
And then I want people to realize that taking back your voice is basically what our voice does. Let me lift up the shirt. Boom. Our voice. So www.ourvoiceusa.org. Um, and what we do is we offer free campaign tool, uh, campaign tools to anyone to get connected to uh, their elected offices from city council and above. Uh, so city council, mayor, county offices, state offices. But then more importantly, it also gives canvassing. Uh, and so it, with the free canvassing, you can create a little you can create a file. It goes to a Dropbox. You can share it with other with other users. And with that master file that you create. You can share with however many people that you want. They can only upload data to, to you. They can't share that data because they have a child of your data. You own your data. We just simply bridge it. And so we are a broker of data. So you can do whatever you want. And let's say you're a, I don't know, a people's party. Or let's say you're a Green Party. Here in Utah, interestingly enough, the Green Party and the Libertarian Party are considering joining and becoming one coalition, right? So that'll be weird to tease out because you got radical right wingers and then you got some pretty far lefties and it'll be a fun conversation to be a part of. I'm, I'm connected to a lot of these people, so it'll be really fun to get to see how this goes. But it, let's say you have a group of, you know, between the two of them, you have a thousand people. Uh, and if they canvas, they can, whether you want to have a good faith agreement, whether, however you want to hash that out, you can feed that information to a central base. So you can create your own party or use party infrastructure and create your own set of, of, of on the ground data. Polling is not as good as on the ground data. And so if you have candidates actually going out and, and canvassing and, and probing their neighborhoods and feeding it to a central hub, you know, if you're uh, if you ever listened or ever read like Forgotten Realms, it's kind of like a lithids. You're creating a central brain that can feed out mm -hmm. um, control. You know? And so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a good way to, uh, whoop, that's a loud cat. Uh, it's a it's a good way to create information that you own. You can sell it if you want. You can share it if you want. It's up to you. It's not up to us to tell you how to use it. And so um, this is effectively why I was there. I didn't mean to be a protester. They created the protester. And out of creating the protester, they invoked Schrodinger's laws. And now Schrodinger's laws has caused me to go down this rabbit hole of requesting a jury trial, which the pretrial hearing is January 2nd uh, this year. Uh, or sorry, next year. And then uh, January 22nd uh, will be the jury trial if they don't drop charges. Um, and if they if they could always drop it to an infraction or they could ask for like a bench trial, which would then be the the judge would be jury and executioner, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, um, I'm not really sure how everything will play out. Uh, I suspect I can form a good enough argument to get, get a lot of people on my side. Uh, and I'm hoping to get a First Amendment win because it will protect not just me, but I, I think other people who who legitimately have a anger and want to stand up and say, "What? What the hell, guys? Like, what? What's going on?" It's it's you know we live in crazy times here where um, you know people are not allowed to express their First Amendment rights, where the mainstream media should be out there protecting and screaming at the top of their lungs about what's happening to Julian Assange, and they're not. And yeah. um, the people, especially on the right wing, want to say, oh, we're all about the American flag and everything. And you were told not to bring an American flag. And you weren't, you know, you weren't yelling, fuck you. You were right. saying, how about protect kids these way? You were all you and, and, and you were kicked off and then arrested for this. So I guess I, I, would you want people to come to your trial date on January 2nd? So January 2nd is the pre-trial hearing. Uh, I, I would not necessarily advise anyone to be there then. It would be nice for media to be there. That way I can kind of unpack and let people know what the next leg is because that will be the good update. Mm -hmm. um, I, the show of support I think would be good on the trial on the trial date, and that's why I'd like to, an update and just not waste people's time. Um, I would like people to, um, if nothing else, check out the website. Again, uh, ourvoiceusa.org. And just poke around and ask questions. The whole point is to, is to ask questions and, and, and make things better. And that's effectively what canvassing is. You go out and you ask questions and you try to make things better. It's so funny, like, you know, when I hear this, America's political system is so completely broken and hijacked by the corporations that a, you know, a, dem a, what a, 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 a fully functioning democracy should encourage uh, debate. It should yes. encourage discussion and debate. That's what it should do. And so many people on the right and left just don't, they don't want to hear it anymore. It's like, it's like the, 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 the people that on the, you know, the Democrats who were like, oh, 
you know, if you voted for Jill Stein, you let you you will you, you gave us Trump. And it's like, well, wait a minute. So the Democratic Party doesn't have to campaign on issues and platforms and they just automatically get my vote. If I call myself left of center, they just automatically get it. They don't have to campaign for it. They don't have to earn my vote. They own it. And it's just like I, we're so far removed because these two parties control the entire election system. There's no mention of two of Republicans or Democrats in the Constitution, and yet they de determine the primary laws. They determine the debate laws for the national elections, you know, for the presidency. They're the ones that say, oh, you have to, a third party candidate has to have 13% um, in the polls to qualify to be on the national stage. They determine that. There's, those are the two parties that arrested, you know, Jill Stein was in a, a jail cell for the 2012 debates because she just wanted to be on the same debate stage. And they surrounded her with security guards like, oh, wow, yeah, that grandmotherly doctor. Yeah. read that folk singer, yeah. right? She's, yeah, she's, and a folk singer, Joan Baez. Yeah, the two of them, boy, they're just going to they're gonna just be dropping haymakers on everybody. Um, it just is so preposterous. And it's like, you know, these organizations and these politicians, they, 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 don't, they, they just want to preach to the choir. They don't want to have any discussions or debates. They, I mean, all of them, Pelosi, you know, when people are, are, are flooding the town hall meetings and demanding single payer health care and all this stuff, nobody, and, and we're so, we've been so abused. We're like all the citizens of this country. It's like we've grown up in an abusive alcoholic household uh, and, and we don't even know what the truth is anymore because the crazy violent alcoholics have been telling us that this this is okay and we should have a debate you if you're the democratic party why are you threatened by the green party you, you well and hey I'd, I'd, I'd actually like your advice on something i i got into an argument with a good friend of mine about uh alexandria casio cortez which one thing i wanted to bring up so back when i talked to you on in january you brought her up you didn't have to look her up you didn't have to look her up before uh, she won her primary you were you had your ear to the ground kudos to you and uh and so the how you know Joanne reads like well just like everyone else I had to look her up too her her it's like well how about you just open you know open your ear and not just open your wallet right um, you're a journalist and, you should know who she is before I do no shit and uh, well so I was let's say disappointed about the uh, uh, endorsement of, of Cuomo but I don't think that the endorsement of Cuomo undoes all the good that she's done or all the acceleration of good points that she's accelerated. Mm -hmm. And she continues to show this, but often people say, I'm just holding her feet to the fire, but it seems to me they're trying to burn a witch. And I think this is probably the biggest problem most progressives that they really like to burn witches. We're a bunch of peasants, we get angry, we wanna burn a witch, rather than actually hold somebody's feet to the fire. And I think that's the biggest nuance that we need to tease out. How do we hold somebody's feet to the fire and not burn which, right? Well, is that your question? Yeah, and like, what, what's your take on that? Uh, my take on this is, you know, when, the, when she said the Cuomo thing, I watched it several times and I went, okay, I don't know that she's just giving this full on endorsement and I don't know, and I think progressives can wig out too easily and, oh, she yeah. sold out, she's a one of them, you know, and it's like, yeah. settle down. The thing I said is, let's wait till she gets in office and sh see what she does and already, <laughs> She's been impressive. She's kicking ass. She's not even in yet. And she's just kicking ass. Yeah. World. She, she sat yeah. in with the protesters. She's pushing a Green New Deal. So she's getting attacked by the right as this, you know, she's this crazy socialist. The corporate Democrats are trying to smear her. Oh, how dare she go against our beloved Nancy Pelosi? So to me, you know, she's, fight, she's fighting for workers' rights. She's fighting for th all things people want. You know, it's like she even when 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 Fox News put out her and those other newly elected congresswomen are all want, you know, fifteen dollars an hour, uh, Medicare for all, free college tuition and a Green New Deal. And Fox News put that out there like, oh, boy, these scary lefties. And, and her response to that was, yeah, <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, of course, like it's so crazy. All we want to do is help people and we're being vilified. No shit. So it's like, um what's this is that mine or is that yours yeah all right yeah that's on my side um okay. wait. um oh okay great thank you zoom um yeah. <laughs> my thing is she's already doing great stuff she's already pushing her agenda for her constituents she's already being a real progressive 
Um, and, you know, uh, the fact that the mainstream media is even saying the words Green New Deal and it's coming from Democrats, not, you know, as much as I, I voted for Jill Stein, I, I like the Green Party a lot, but they don't have the power that the Democratic Party does. So if within the Democratic Party, which can it be reformed, I don't know, remains to be seen, but the fact that, the, that she is in Congress and... Uh, yeah, we should hold her feet to the fire. We should hold her accountable. I, I say this, we need to hold the people we voted for even more accountable than the ones we didn't. And I, I, I say that as someone who is disappointed in myself for not being more publicly critical of Obama, a guy I voted for twice. So I think say this, don't freak out at every little thing. Progressives, don't lose your shit. But yeah, hold her accountable. And I think she's, so far I'm very impressed with who she is and what she's doing. And Legit, man. Yeah, Legit. You know, when both sides are coming after you, you know you're doing something right. <laughs> well, and uh, they're effectively saying from the from the right, uh, don't listen to the science girl. And from the left, they're saying, or so-called left, uh, don't listen to the peasant. Don't listen to the scientifically literate peasant. Right. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, it's crazy. Well, I and, kept hearing people say, well, why is she going after battle-tested Nancy Pelosi? I'm like, by battle-tested, you mean takes all the money from the healthcare industry? Is that the battle-testing you're talking yeah. about? Because that's what this is really about. The healthcare industry has been doubling down on Democrats because now Democrats control the Congress. And they yeah. Medicare for All is not good for the healthcare industry. It's no. for the 99% of of yep. the population, which is you and I and everybody watching this. I don't think there's a lot of billionaires watching my show, but if there are, <laughs> go to my Patreon page. Um, no shit. <laughs> you know, write me a check for half a million dollars and I'll make this channel the most popular channel on the face of the earth and you wouldn't even notice the money. That's to all the billionaires watching. Um, right. But yeah, man, I think it's, it's uh, you know, hold Ocasio-Cortez accountable and, and don't lose your shit over every little right. thing, you know? Um, so the, um, before I forget the spokes raptor thing. So let me, let yeah, me talk about that. that is. So I showed up, uh, wearing again, this shirt, uh, and I had a raptor head. It was blue from uh, Jurassic world and my, uh, wife's mom bought it for my son and it's gigantic on him and it fits just about right on me. And I showed up to a protest holding a sign that said, uh, effectively, only you can save yourself from a, you know, predatory, parasitic government, you know, Nazi government run for office. You know, our voice, USA. So I was holding the, the sign, showed up with my raptor mask. Um, and then I, I met Jeff Merkley. He, I, I took off my head. I had the sign. He didn't like the word Nazi. Though he's, he's pretty outspoken critic of the GOP, but yeah, he didn't want to, he didn't want a picture with the sign. So I put the sign to, uh, down before I got a picture with him. But, uh, um, and then I, I've used the Raptor head, um, to a, uh, I stood up to the NRA. And so, you know, the, uh, Mar you know, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas kids, uh, Parkland students. Yeah. So, uh, there's a, what's called the Utah gun, uh, exchange. You ever heard of them? So these are the guys that you probably have heard of, but haven't didn't know their name. These are the guys that drive the armored Humvee with a fucking mounted 50 cal and chase these kids around the country. So their argument is the 50 cal isn't functional. So neither is the Michael Myers suit, but don't fucking follow me around with it, right? Like, what do you mean the 50 cal isn't functional? That doesn't horrify you to chase kids who still wake up likely hearing their best friends screaming their dying breath and a fucking 50 cal and you chase them and you think this is a reasonable idea so i effectively told them this in the nra they were screaming so i screamed back and i uh i i got on vice uh they kind of just showed uh, what was going on um but I, I i said do you understand how sick that is to follow these guys and so i i uh you know follow these guys around uh, or know what i say chase chase these kids around the country uh with a Armored Humvee and 50 cal. This guy freaked out on me. We don't chase. We follow. And so he like lost his shit over semantics. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it taught me that these guys just look for the, they look for the weakest thing of any argument and they blow it up just to try and show any weakness and any of their weakness. They just try to strong man over it. 
And so I pointed out how unreasonable he was, and I put on my dinosaur head again for like a second. And then I put my, I think I had my megaphone in one hand, and the Salt Lake, Salt Lake Tribune, bam, snapped a photo. I wore it for like three seconds. And so I got in the, in the paper wearing my, wearing my head and this shirt. And so, but yeah, I wanted to make sure that the NRA knew like, what the fuck? Like there's, here's a, here's a vet right here and I, uh, who stands against the NRA and stands with these kids. And um, I, at the end of the night, while the crazies left, I got along with about 30 of the people who were pro NRA. Um, and so I, I wasn't unreasonable. I got along with well over half the people who were there for the right wing portion of the rally, the counter protest. There were about five or six people who were just crazy, who just once they left, everyone was pretty reasonable, actually. So it's a, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So it taught me a lot. But yeah, so I showed up to Mia Love. Here's a, here's a right winger. I got an American flag. Get the fuck off our property. Well, I mean, it's, it's crazy what happened to you, and I'm glad you're, you know, t publicly telling your story, and I hope things work out for you. If there's anybody watching this or, have, you know, email the local media and see if the media can come out uh, on January 2nd, because the media should be covering this. It's a First Amendment story, and um, and tell everybody again the Our Voice website. So it's the OurVoiceUSA.org. If you... Uh, are good at writing uh, we publish editorials uh, we've got writer submissions uh, we are non-partisan i obviously wear my partisanship on my sleeves i try not to i'm not necessarily pro-democrat but i'm very leftist um, but we want to make sure that we are um, non-partisan so we don't publish partisan stuff i even wrote things something that was a little hacky that we threw out but uh yeah our voice usa.org and um, I do, I do have a GoFundMe. I've raised eight hundred and ten bucks for my own personal legal bills, so that's not terrible. I'm uh, going to see if I can get a former mayor as a attorney. He hasn't agreed to anything, uh, but I would like to get uh, Rocky Anderson's interest on, uh, in this. And so that probably is meaningless to you, but anyone uh, locally uh, might uh, well know Rocky Anderson. But what's your GoFundMe? Hey, uh, so my GoFundMe is a uh, uh, veteran standing for First Amendment. I've got it on my uh, on my uh, Facebook, Joshua Cameron, um, and uh, I do like one thing I I would like to plug real quick. I, I wrote one of the editorials I wrote was "Don't be a crab in a bucket," and really the the point of that is nothing more than um, if somebody wants to run for office around you, don't pull them down. Like hear them out. Even if you don't know, even if you think that they're just a shit turd, like maybe they know something that, that you don't. Right. And you don't necessarily need to, to shit on their parade from day one. And we try to enable people to to save them up to thousands, to however long they want to use it, tens of thousands of dollars by giving free tools and as democratically uh, uh, socialist uh, as possible, rewarding entrepreneurs who want to put it out on the line, who want to canvas, who want to run for office. Well, here are some tools, aggregate some data, Make yourself pretty powerful. You know, you can group together, whether it be a get a People's Party, a Green Libertarian Party, uh, however you want to do that. The, the Green Party just needs, I think, more data, less less crazy people that the right wingers either manufacture or uh, just kind of uh, magnify. But. Well, Josh Cameron, thank you so much uh, for taking your time today and telling your story. And everybody watching, I'll put the links uh, to Our Voice in the show notes below. And I'll also get his GoFundMe below if you want to help support his legal campaign to defend his First Amendment right for a combat vet to bring an American flag to a political rally, <laughs> which is uh, pretty insane. That it is at a right wing rally, no less. Like the left wingers looked at me kind of like, whoa, yeah. every time. But they, they didn't kick me off, never. And right when we get the fuck out. That's but. crazy. Well, I'll skid road, thank but. you so much for your time and thank you everybody for watching the show. And uh, please like and share these videos and subscribe and hit the bell notification button. YouTube has been unsubscribing people and please go to my patreon.com slash Graham Elwood. All those links are below and the progressive comedy tour are in the show notes below at GrahamElwood.com. Thank you so much for watching and thank you, Josh. Thanks, man. <laughs>